Hey guys, what's going on? Today in this video, we're going to be covering everything that you need to know from E3 2017. Well, the weekend just wrapped from E3, and there's a lot of good stuff to get into. So whether you did not see everything that you wanted to see, or you didn't see anything at all, we're going to cover everything that you need to know from this past weekend. So first was EA Play. They had their conference on Saturday. And of course, they have to cover FIFA and, and all those cool things. And if you're a big fan of that, you're probably pretty happy with what they discussed. But Madden right here, and th hey, that guy looks familiar. Well, anyway, Madden, they had a trailer for this kind of story mode, and that was cool. But what you're seeing right here was one of the big things to come out of EA Play. And this is part of the EA Originals series, and it is called A Way Out. And what they're doing is they're trying to kind of revolutionize the way that co-op works. <laughs> it's pretty cool because, as you see, it's a split-screen game. And there are two different characters, and you're trying to escape a prison. Now, I don't know if it's because you were wrongly convicted or what's going on, but it looks really cool because while one character on one side of the screen might be having a cutscene, the next one is actually still playing the game, and it occurs simultaneously. It's a really cool idea, and you can either do it on your couch or online co-op. And part of what's really interesting, too, is that while one character can try, say, distracting a guard, the other one can play an objective. And right now you're seeing one cut, uh, cut screen, and the other one is actual gameplay. But what's also interesting is that if that doesn't work for some reason, you can switch characters. So not switch playing, but rather the other character next to you or who you're playing with online Maybe he can try distracting the guard while you try making a deal or whatever else is going on. So this is a really cool way to get back into co-op games and because there's so much focus on multiplayer now that this is like a campaign for two people to really enjoy. And it looks like it's pretty neat. But what you're seeing right here was undoubtedly the biggest highlight of EA Play, and that's Star Wars Battlefront 2. In fact, they devoted half an hour of their conference toward this game. And that included some uh, streaming of some gameplay of Assault on Theed, which is really cool. I recommend checking that out if you're interested. Also, there are some really great YouTubers who were there, including Battlefront Updates and Massive G. I'm a huge fan of Massive G. Definitely check him out if you haven't yet. Awesome streamer. And uh, they got some really cool videos exploring this one map and this one game style. It's just a little quick preview. But you can see all of the advancements they've made from Battlefront 2015. In fact, the EA spokesperson on stage said, when we were developing this, you know, we got a lot of feedback from the last Battlefront. And a lot of it was good. And a lot of it was constructive. And he said, by constructive, I mean a lot of it wasn't good. So they took all that feedback and advice and implemented it into this game to make it awesome. They're reintroducing classes and a whole different style of power-ups and it looks like it's going to be really cool. So I definitely recommend checking out the streams of Battlefront 2 from all of the individual YouTubers who were there because it's pretty sweet if you're interested in the game. Of course, on Sunday was possibly the biggest conference to come out of E3 this year, and that is the Microsoft conference because they unveiled what we previously knew as Project Scorpio, but we now know it as the Xbox One X. Man, this is a monster of a console. And we knew it would be with the six teraflops. It, I mean, we, all those specs that we already know, it's going to be great. The, the native uncompressed 4K elements it has, Dolby Atmos sound, like, it's got everything. What we didn't know is what it would look like. We didn't know what price point it would be at. And we didn't know what games might look like on it. We had an idea, but we wanted to see it for ourselves. And that's what Microsoft did for us. Right off the bat, they kicked off their conference with the console. They didn't do too much into it because Microsoft was largely focused on the games. But we'll see what it looks like here at the end of this video. But the price point is $499. And honestly, that's not bad. Many people were estimating it would be somewhere around $700 based off of the hardware of it. At the same time, I know a lot of people were hoping for somewhere around $399. But let's be real, you're not going to get this quality console for that price. It's just not going to happen. Xbox One X is not made for the average gamer. It's made for the more hardcore or more dedicated, however you want to say it. Just like PC gaming, that's not for everybody. And this is more of an investment. It's a premium console, and so it's going to come at a premium price. And honestly, $499, <laughs> that's not bad. 
But in addition to the Xbox One X, they covered so many games at the Microsoft conference, 40-something, and 20, maybe 22 of those were originals. This is what the console looks like. Isn't it sleek? Great. It's the smallest Xbox they've made to date. That was also pretty surprising, considering how much power this thing packs. But in addition, they also talked about Minecraft because guess what? They're going to introduce cross-play across every system and console except the PlayStation 4 because they didn't really want to play with that. But iPads, Nintendo Switch, Xbox, anything, you can do cross-play with it on Minecraft coming out soon. Also, they kind of had a big announcement with backward compatibility that they're introducing the original series Xbox games to backward compatibility, not just 360 anymore. Your original Xbox discs will start to work on the Xbox One. That's pretty sweet. But what you're seeing now is the Player Unknown Battlegrounds game. So I'll be honest. I knew a little bit about this game. I didn't know a lot. I know a lot more now because I've been looking into it and it looks like so much fun. What they're going to be doing is introducing this to Xbox for the console exclusive. So you'll be able to play this on Xbox in addition to PC. How cool is that? Well, anyway, I don't know if it'll be cross-play between the two or they didn't really say to my knowledge. But this game looks really cool. It's almost like The Division, the survival DLC, but for me, done better. This is a really cool game. If you don't know about it, check it out on YouTube. It's really sweet. You have 100 players, and it's basically a fight to the death. Let's see who wins. Who's the last man standing? Player Unknown was a gamer himself and uh, decided to make his own game because he wasn't completely satisfied. And this is the result, and it's sweet. I think the graphics also look a lot better, so I'm wondering if these are graphics designed for the Xbox because they, they seem to be upgraded from the PC version. Not that those look bad, but these definitely do look better. Another thing, by the way, to come out from the Microsoft conference was Crackdown 3 with Terry Crews and some other cool games. That they, like I said, they have 40-something, and it was pretty sweet. But what you're seeing here is called Anthem. And, wow, this is BioWare's new game, of course, with EA. And the, the footage here was originally produced in 4k on the xbox one x wow this kind of looks like uh jetta or jakku from star wars it's kind of funny anyway and you kind of have this exosuit that you get to play at or play in and almost like iron man and anyway this game looks great and we're going to skip ahead in just a minute to some what some of the gameplay looks like uh here we are this is a massive world where you can kind of do whatever you want. And it's almost, if you're familiar with The Division, it's kind of like that, in that your friends can join up and squad with you. And right here, you can see someone doing that with an Iron Man landing. Anyway, you get to go through this world together, explore it, come across new locations, new things. Did I say it's huge? It's a huge world, and it looks so beautiful, as you can tell. And like I said, this is captured on the Xbox One X. It is not made exclusively for that. However, the game was designed with that in mind. They wanted to harness the full capacity of the Xbox One X to the best that they could. And this is the game that they came up with. So as you can see, you, you just keep going and going. And you can come across monsters, different objectives. It's almost like what would happen if Iron Man went to the Avatar world and wanted it to feel like The Division. <laughs> That's kind of how I take this game. And honestly, I I'm, I'm, I was a pretty big fan of The Division. I haven't played it much recently, but I, I, was, I liked that game. I really enjoyed it. So this is one I'm definitely going to be watching as we go forward because it, it looks so amazing. And it looks like it's going to be fun. And it's one of the games to watch coming out of E3. So in addition, as I mentioned, there were 22, I believe, exclusives coming from Xbox at their conference among 40 games, 40-something 40 games. And th there was just so much to take in. So check it out more if you're interested. This here is from the Bethesda conference, which came out later Sunday, uh, 9 p.m. Pacific or, or midnight Eastern time. And what you're seeing here is Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. Many people are excited for this game. I'll be honest, I did not play Wolfenstein. So 
I'm sure you guys have a lot of good reason to be excited, but there was some hype, some speculation that they might be having a sequel to Wolfenstein at this conference, and they did. As you see, this is just a, a quick snapshot of the trailer for it. But many people are freaking out about it. So if you're a fan of the series, you, well, you've probably heard about this by now. You've probably seen the trailer. But if not, check it out, because people seem to be pretty pleased with it. In addition, they talked about some VR content, including what you're about to see here first, which is Fallout 4 on VR. It looks like a lot of fun. I imagine fans of the Fallout series are going to be all over this if they have VR. And it's just kind of funny, because as good as this looks right now, can you imagine how far VR is going to be in a few years? Like, if you compare games from the PlayStation or, or PlayStation 2 to what you're getting now in games, like what you just saw with Anthem such a huge difference. And what we're seeing now with VR, as good as it looks, might one day look almost like old PlayStation 2 games do. I'm excited to see what happens with VR. But they have Doom and Fallout 4 announced for VR, and that's pretty sweet. In addition, they also talked, of course, about Skyrim coming to the Nintendo Switch, and they had some gameplay trailers for that. Not a date, however, um, but it's still coming sometime soon. And a big effort that Bethesda is also pushing right now is with Quake and eSports. So many people consider Quake to be one of the original, if not the original game, to push the eSports initiative. Well, Bethesda is bringing it back because they are introducing, this trailer is the announcement for the Quake Champions World Championship. And in fact, they also have a beta that you can join right now going on. But the thing that's interesting about this is that it's one of the original arena-based games for, again, if not the original, I know many people would probably have an argument about that, but, well, anyway. Um, it, it looks pretty good, and I know many people have been waiting for a long time for more Quake, and here they're finally going to be getting it. So definitely check out the Bethesda website for more on the Esports World Championship if that's your kind of thing. They got new characters coming out too, and just lots of cool stuff for fans of the series. Finally, the last thing, I guess, from the Bethesda conference was what you're seeing right now. The Evil Will... The ha -ha. Excuse me, this is a long video. The Evil Within 2. So, <laughs> The Evil Within was a massively successful game for people who played it. They loved it. And... They've been wanting a sequel, and they're getting a sequel. And it was very, <laughs> this was kind of a weird trailer. Bethesda overall, they're great at what they do. Many times they're kind of weird. Wolfenstein, it's weird. This is weird, but they're great games. So the trailer was accompanied by a cover of Duran Duran's song, Ordinary World, and it was pretty eerie. <laughs> um, and that was the overall style. That was the purpose of this trailer, was to make you feel kind of creeped out and to announce that this game is coming it's not a good trailer if you're looking at what the game is going to be like if you're looking at gameplay something like that it's not the, that kind of trailer it's not supposed to be but here you can tell that it's it's going to be a crazy game and that's really all that they really wanted you to know so now we're going to go over and transition to the ubisoft conference the, what we're seeing here is what they wrapped up with. It's the end of their conference. And it was a big surprise for many people. Beyond Good and Evil 2. I, I don't know what to say. If you've been online, if you've been a part of the gaming community at all, you've probably seen people really freaking out about this. It's been something around 15 years since the first one. And... They've been waiting, fans have been waiting for a long time for something else to do with this game. And here it is. This was the revealed trailer for Beyond Good and Evil 2, and it made so many people happy. The, the, the wait seems to have paid off, at least for now, people are cloud nine about this game, fans of the series. So hopefully it keeps up and, and people remain excited. Another big thing to come from the Ubisoft conference was Skull and Bones, and you're seeing a trailer for that right now. It's Ubisoft Singapore. They've been apparently developing this game for some time. And they're really proud of it. They say it's very innovative and interesting. When I first saw this, and you might be thinking the same thing, 
it almost looks like a Pirates of the Caribbean game. It's the right era. Everything looks very similar. It's not. In fact, if anything, it's it's almost like the Division at Sea pirate version. I don't want to keep making comparisons to the Division, but really, that, that's kind of how it is. In fact, many people were making jokes about how this game should be called Tom Clancy's Skull and Bones. It's just got that kind of feel to it. And it, it really is that kind of game as well. And it's also interesting that this comes out at the same E3. I mean... I'm sure they didn't plan it this way, but Sea of Thieves, which I didn't really get to uh, discussing that one, but this uh, the two games, they're, they kind of own the pirate genre of gaming right now, and it's pretty interesting. Right here, of course, is the trailer for The Crew 2. Okay, if you haven't seen this trailer, like go, go look at it right now. I don't even care. Just pause this video. I don't care, but you have to see this trailer because whether or not you like the game, I don't think you have to like the game to like the trailer. It it was just, it was a good trailer. It was exciting. The graphics, I mean, come on, look at this. The great graphics. And if you like racing, you're going to like this game because not only is it great for cars to be racing, but you can race airplanes. You can race helicopters. You can race boats, motorcycles. It's a game about racing. That's just all it is. And as I mentioned, you can tell, this is just a quick snapshot of the trailer, but it's a good, cool trailer. They also, of course, had just Dance 2018. Want to throw that in there. And here you're seeing Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. This is an effort between Nintendo and Ubisoft, obviously. (laughs) You can probably tell that much, but, well, anyway. It looks really cool. It, it takes place in the Mario world. It will be coming to the Nintendo Switch, and it has the Rabbids humor. If you like either of these series, either of these franchises, you're probably going to be pretty happy with this game. The combat element of it is a, a turn-based combat, but it, it looks really fun. It's not your. It doesn't seem typical, and it seems like a genuinely good blend of the two series, of the two franchises, and I'm almost excited about it, and I'm not a huge fan but it looks pretty cool. The biggest thing, however, to come out of the Ubisoft conference is this, Assassin's Creed Origins. I mean, come on, look at this. This is 4K gaming as captured by gameplay on the Xbox One X. It's stunning. This is a stunning visual for a game. And really, Assassin's Creed Origins is going to be a pretty sweet game. Apparently, the developers really wanted to go back to the roots of what does it mean to play Assassin's Creed? The experience you have, what is it about? And they tried to reinvent the game to reestablish its base. That's what I've heard, and it it seems like they've done it. There are lots of streams online from people playing it this weekend, and it it really looks pretty awesome. It's a good game. It looks like it's a good first game for anyone to jump into, even if you're not a part of the Assassin's Creed family already. It should still be a good one to do. Of course, it takes place in ancient Egypt, as you can see. And supposedly, part of the storyline is to explain, at least in part, the origins of the Brotherhood. How did Assassin's Creed... How did that begin? Where do the Assassins come from? What, What is this all about? Apparently, this game really starts to dive into that and give some answers. Now, they did also go into Far Cry 5 um, and some cool stuff with that, but something was really lacking from the Ubisoft conference. Of course, I'm talking about Tom Clancy games. I know many people were really excited (laughs) that there was nothing there, but that's a huge base of the Ubisoft players. And... It just seems interesting (laughs) that they didn't include anything about it. In fact, many people had predicted that they would have something for The Division and Rainbow Six Siege, something about continued support, something. I I, I don't know. In fact, it was either on the IGN or GameSpot stream. I think it was IGN. Some people had predicted that there would be some mention of, of those games, and absolutely nothing Tom Clancy, nothing new, and nothing about the old ones we already know. There was also nothing about any of the movies that we know are going to be happening, whether that's the Division movie, the Splinter Cell movie with Tom Hardy, 
the uh, the sequel to Assassin's Creed. There was nothing for any movies. They don't have to put anything movie in there, but I don't know. It's kind of weird. What you're seeing right now is a part of the Sony conference, which is the last part we're going to be getting to that happened Monday night. This video is for the Horizon Zero Dawn DLC called The Frozen Wilds. And if it looks pretty cool, it's because it does look cool. But I have no idea what it sounds like. <laughs> if you were watching this stream on Twitch or YouTube, or I believe the PlayStation site itself, they were all having some form of technical issues where for the first maybe 10 minutes, depending on where you were watching, you couldn't hear anything. So it started with the Uncharted game, and then now this, and then it went into Days Gone, and you couldn't hear a single thing. So it looks cool, but that's all we know. It just looks cool. Anyway, uh, they, they got into some good games at the Sony conference. They had, in addition to what I just mentioned, they had Detroit Becoming Human. They had God of War 4. They had Spider-Man, which we'll show in a little bit. This here is Days Gone. It, it did not blow anybody away, and I'll get to why in a minute. But here you're about to see the Days Gone gameplay. And right there is Sam Witwer, who was the man behind Galen Starkiller, I believe, from The Force Unleashed. That's him there, and this is his new game. We first got a glimpse of it last year at E3 when he was just fighting off that massive, endless stream of zombies. And... uh this uh, is the next look at it. But here's the thing about the Sony conference. We, we live in a day and age where we expect to be surprised at conventions. Whether you're talking about E3 or a Comic-Con, Star Wars Celebration, BlizzCon, anything like that. You expect to be blown away. You expect some surprises, something. And in many cases, we get that. That's what happened with Microsoft, with their um, Scorpio announcement. Some of it we knew, some of it we didn't. The backward compatibility with the original Xbox, that was unexpected. You know, it, it, was, it was cool. And that's what you look for. With Sony's thing, there was absolutely nothing that was unexpected. In fact, some things that were predicted weren't even there, like The Last of Us 2. We were expecting to see some things based off of that, and we had nothing. Okay, you know, Sony does what Sony does. But if you compare this to what Sony's done in the past, in addition to what Microsoft did this year, it was kind of disappointing with Sony as a conference. Not that what they showed was bad. In fact, they showed a lot of really cool and really good stuff. But it just didn't blow you away. We already knew so much of it including what's coming up in the in the next last section, which is Spider-Man gameplay, the trailer for the gameplay. That, that's pretty cool. I'm just going to shut up for a second because it's coming up in, like, now? Ha! <laughs> okay. This is by Insomniac Games, and so much hype around this game, and uh, rightfully so. I'm excited. I'm going to get this. It's going to be a really well-done classic Spider-Man game, I think, Originally on Amazon, it was it's listed as pre-order, and the release date was December of this year. But this trailer said uh, 2018. I don't remember if it said early 2018 or not, but still, it looks pretty cool. You can tell it, it's a good-looking game. We're excited. So although Sony overall didn't have anything special, it, it was still a, a good conference. It wasn't great, wasn't amazing, but it was good. Okay to good. Um, and, and if you see some problems with the stream, by the way, again, it was technical difficulties on their end. But anyway, thank you guys for watching this video, this overview of E3, what happened this past uh, weekend. And if you have any questions, uh, let me know right in the comments if there are any games you want me to look at more in depth. I can do a video just on that game or any games that I didn't cover. Let me know. Um, I might be doing some more videos here sometime soon with some uh, streams or whatnot. We'll see. Some pretty good stuff. But just let me know. Um, subscribe if you would like to see some more stuff. Or, like I said, just let me know in the comments what you want me to cover, and I would be happy to do so. Otherwise, I hope this was a good look at E3. I hope you got a, a good view of everything you didn't see or wanted to know more about. And, um, yeah, I guess just have some fun. Enjoy, enjoy the games that you see, and, and check out these awesome trailers. Thank you, everybody.